Well, hello there. So I thought I would put to this video together for our young women and um, teach you how to draw a very simple fox. And we are going to put it together with a starry night background. Um, so here goes. I'm going to draw my fox over in this area and I'm going to make him about as big as my hand. So um, with that being said, I'm going to start with my gray crayon. I like to draw in gray sometimes because then I can color over it and it doesn't um, you know show up very very strongly against the colors I choose to color. And then a, so I'm making this V shape here and I'm going to connect this V shape with an arched line. Give our fox two ears and um, Foxes have pointy nose in real life. This is obviously like more of a shaped fox. So we're going to give them these eyes, these curved eyes, and then I'm going to go back over these later with black. But for now, I'll just put them in with gray. And here's his nose. And then his body is going to be um, kind of like an oval shape. I'm going to start um, here on that side, kind of in the middle of the eye, come down, and then um, I'm going to create his belly. It could be a her, why am I saying his? I don't know. Why do I think of foxes as being male? So um, then his legs, his little feet, um, like kind of like a boot, but it has a curved top here. And we'll t curve that. So this comes down all the way here. And then his tail. They kind of have like a narrow tail and then it gets bushy. So we are going to create a very bushy tail that gets narrow and then it has like this white tip. So there's our simplified fox. Now, I'm going to dig into my crayons here and I'm going to get um, my light blue crayon. I kind of think like my fox's head is a little bit small for his body, but you know, that's fine. He's juvenile, okay? So I'm going to create a snowbank behind my fox that just, you know, gentle curving snowbank here. And after that, that I'm going actually going to have it have another one come and go this way. So now I have He's kind of sitting up on top of this one. So the way I like to um, do Starry Nights with my students is get this blue crayon, a dark blue. Is this my blue? That's cerulean. All right, crayons, not behaving. Here's my blue. Okay, so I have a variety of colors here. I like to draw some stars in. And I'm going to put uh, some evergreen trees over in this area. Okay, so I'm going to color circles here. So it's almost time for school to get out while well, I'm recording this for you guys. And we're going to put the moon up in the sky, a crescent moon right here. And then we're going to color that guy in. Now I'm coloring these in nice and solid because we're going to, well, if you choose to, if you want to, you can paint over this um, with blue watercolor paint when we're done. Otherwise you can just leave it as is because we'll kind of fill it in. I'm going to go ahead and take my black um, crayon and I'm going to draw some trunks to kind of give me some height height references for some trees here. And when I draw these types of evergreen trees, I just draw down and flick out, down and out. So it's the simplest way I've found. I, I don't tend to draw them like this when I'm, um, I don't know, doing them for my own. But in this case, because we're going to do this overpainting, and um, we're doing everything with crayons. I don't even know. Do you? I hope you guys have crayons. So if you don't, 
um, I think you can still get away with doing this with colored pencil and maybe the same effect okay okay and then all your trees this one I want to be a little bit taller and they blend together you know evergreens grow and obviously I'm drawing them black and you could do them dark dark green if you want but it's nighttime so they would show up as black um, with um, just the moonlight and the starlight they would have that look so that's why we're doing black okay and then my last little guy over here kind of off on his own all right so there's my four trees my fox which needs to be colored but before I do that I want to finish up my sky so what I do after this is I color around my yellows with my white which you can't see um, but when we paint over it it'll pop out okay and then after the white I go ahead and I take my yellow back and I create these dashed lines all the way and they do not have to be perfect totally and I have, I'm getting black crayon all over the place maybe I should have waited to do the trees last so what happens when you're <sighs> rushing at the end of the day okay so there's those and then I'm going to take this orange crayon and do the same thing go and do my dashes all the way around I like to tease the kids and tell them that this looks like fried eggs who likes to eat fried eggs okay all the way around our moon too okay and I know that you guys are older and not in elementary school but I still think it's fun to create little projects like this and I'm gonna go ahead and take my white crayon and do that over it again I don't even know if I went around my moon did I I can't remember all right so there's that now I'm going to create like a swirling um, like starry night how Van Gogh um, he has his um, swir every time I think, hear the word swirling I think of elf twirling swirling gum gumdrops okay so when I have that I'm gonna go around this with my blue light blue this one's called blue green crayon all the way around my crayons are starting to get dull because I've been using them a lot lately imagine that I never thought I would use crayons as much as I have during as an art teacher as much as I have during COVID that's for sure my stu art students are probably like another project with crayons well it's what you have at home kids all right so then I'm gonna take my dark blue crayon and do this actually is just regular blue not dark blue but it's darker than what I did do that same swirl and just do my dashed lines try not to flick I always tell the kids these aren't like long lines these are just um, short dashes because in impressionism Van Gogh um, would use short brush strokes with his paint and it was loaded with paint and he would put down these bits of paint okay so 
this is what our sky looks like so far. And what we're going to do with the rest of it is just go and put horizontal um, lines in here. And I'm spacing them out because I'm going to go back in with my lighter crayon, crayon, my lighter blue crayon, and my white crayon and add more dashes in here as we fill the sky. Okay. Now I try to keep these as horizontal as I can because I don't want it getting kind of mixed up with the swirl part of it. I like it to be differentiated from and a few over here and a few up here and then I'm going to take my blue green crayon and do the same thing. and try to fill in all those spaces. I'm not doing, again, I'm not doing really long lines. It looks best when you do short little dashed marks, okay? Over here. And you can see I'm doing this pretty quickly. Um, I've done it a lot, so you might have to pause the video and go a little bit slower. That's fine. Last but not least, I'm going to take this white crayon and just wherever I see a space, I'm going to go ahead and add a white into there. And I can even go around my swirls. And crazy thing is I can't see the white crayon on here, you know, but I know what it's going to do. It's going to help me out a lot when I go to paint over this. Okay, so that's that. Um, my fox, I'm going to color it a nice bright um, orange color. Maybe not that one. That's like red. It's fine. It's fine. It's all good. Right. You know what I'm going to do with this guy? I'm going to show you how to shade this fox so that um, it looks like it has form or dimension. Okay. I color over my gray lines. All right. And I'm sure your guys' foxes will look way cuter than mine. Go around his nose. And do his tail over here while I'm up in this area. Kind of trying to go from top to, to bottom because every time I go over the, all the little crayon bits, start smearing. Alright. And then for his legs, I'm going to color them black. They have, foxes have these little skinny little black legs. Where's my gray crayon? I'm gonna connect this right down here. And I'm gonna go over his nose and his eyes. Just like that. And then, like I told you guys, I'm gonna take this darker orange crayon and I'm, the light from the moon is coming from this direction. So I'm going to add some shading with my darker crayon, especially under his head here and on this side of his body I have the shading and over here on his tail 
so that it looks like he is not just a flat fox on sitting on the snowbank, right? He he exists in space. His form, you could walk around him. Okay, I'm going to take this um, blue-green crayon and I'm going to add a little bit of shading on the side of his tummy in between his legs and on the side of his tail just to give a little bit of dimension there. Alright, and then I'm going to take my um, dark blue crayon and the moon is shining here so I'm going to create some shadows of these trees on the snow just by going back and forth. Oh, and I'm noticing that I didn't really go in that tree. Alright, and this guy, this little foxy, has a shadow too. He's got a shadow come into the side and in front of him, so we're going to have him light shining behind him as well. Okay, so um, those are all the, cr the stuff that we need to do with the crayons. Alright, and then what we're going to do is I'm going to get my watercolor tray right here get some blue watercolor and I'm going to paint straight over the top of the part, the background, the sky that I created, the starry night sky that I created. Now you don't want the water to pool up so you just use your brush to pull, pull the paint away from any areas that it's gathering up, okay? And this is a quick, you do, do this really quickly. And I know I did not tell you to have this for tonight. So this is something that, these are like what, less than $2 at the store. Go pick yourself up a set of watercolors. And um, you guys can have fun with Crayon Resist like I do <laughs> with my students. And then right over here. Got to go around him. I'm not going to paint over him or try not to because I didn't color in his eyes. If I had, then we'd be good to go. I'll probably just paint right over him. There you go. That's your fox on a starry night. Thanks for joining.